Hey everyone, what is going on? It is Brian. Welcome back to the channel. It's been a little bit, and for everyone who's messaged uh, during the time saying, hey Brian, when you can do another video, what are you gonna do? Hey, I, I've got a backlog of stuff. I've had a lot of things going on, from work to other bourbon work that I've been doing, uh, but I got some things that have been backed up, and so if you all want content, uh, I'm bringing out the content again. And we're starting with Barrel Bourbon Batch 033. You might feel like you've seen a lot of people on WhiskeyTube, a lot of reviewers and whatnot, getting this bottle, trying this bottle, and you're right. A lot of people have been sent samples of this, sent a bottle of this. Barrel did send me a bottle of this as well, so thank you, Barrel, for the opportunity to try this. If you're one who's like, man, I can't trust what anybody says, uh, if it's an exchange for a bottle, or whatever, uh, go ahead and stop this video. I've got plenty of other content that you can check out if that's more your speed. Uh, but yeah, Barrel did send me this bottle. Thank you again for sending that with no strings attached. And I've seen so many, I've not watched any of the reviews out there, but I've seen so many highly favorable uh, posts about Batch 33 in general, and I'm not uh, super experienced with the whole back catalog of all the barrel releases that they have done, but uh, they had reached out to me because of other videos that I've done in regards to Stellum or Barrel, and so I'm glad to uh, be able to try a product. This is uh, aged eight to five years. If you look further on the website, it's aged from five to nine years. Some high rye barrels, some high corn barrels have been mixed together uh, into this blend here. It is coming in at 116.6 proof, and we're just kind of pull it apart. We're gonna dissect it a little bit, and we're gonna try and figure out what I think about it. If you look here on the color, you'll see it is fairly light in color. It's got that kind of golden light honey type color to it. Nothing super crazy, but we really start to pull it apart at the nose. And especially from the minute you pour it to maybe a couple of minutes after sitting there, you already morph through a whole lot of flavors on the nose. It's been sitting in the glass for a little bit now. In some of the notes that I'm pulling apart now, it has a, a strong citrus presence. It has a lot of toffee right away. It has this uh, tree sap type of uh, kind of grassiness or, or earthiness at play. Some, some darker fruits, maybe some stewed fruits, some like cherry, some raspberry notes in there. But also it has some kind of youthful, um, a bright, pretty notes a little bit in there. You move into pear notes, you get almost maybe a cantaloupe type melon note in there as well. The more you nose this, the more notes are kind of all over the place. And I say all over the place because it runs the gamut. You kind of have maybe some youthful lighter notes that I've pulled apart in some MGP stuff before. And then you also have some kind of funky notes that you don't often get. Going a little deeper in there, you get some, some spices as well as confectioner sugar. So these are notes that we've mentioned in a lot of things before. I'd say overall, it's a pretty typical bourbon-like nose. To sum up very broadly, it's when you start to really dive into the nose that you start to pull out a lot of unique notes that you don't often find in every other nose. And for that, it's pretty intriguing. Uh, kind of juicy fruit gum meets cinnamon. Um, definitely some sweet and spice at the same time. Let's go ahead and dive into the palate for the first sip. It does feel very light initially on the palate. It moves to some very spice notes. Very heavy on the cinnamon, very heavy on the baking spices, very heavy on these black pepper notes. And a lot of times I feel like I've, I've pulled out um, honey and vanilla. This one's pretty specifically molasses-y notes. It's, it's darker, it's interesting. But then again, the more I, the more I the, uh, bring in through the nose and then taste on the palate, it has these peachy tones you've heard me talk about in Pinhook before, you've heard me talk about in Stellum before, you've heard me talk about in a lot of other brands, maybe bringing in some MGP stuff as well, or getting into a little bit of the Blue Run stuff, getting a little bit into things that were distilled, uh, Castle and Key based, uh, a whole pocket of, of flavors in the stone fruit category that, that we've mentioned in past videos from products you get on the palate here. It is still bready. It still does bring out a lot of this juicy fruit gum note. Man, it really does have a lot of kind of sweeter toffee, butterscotchy notes linger on, but gosh, there is a lot of 
baking spice. There is a lot of pepper on this and, and it lingers with a lot of bright citrus. The lingering note is citrus. I keep thinking I'm getting a little bit of oak influence, but I would say predominantly it's a little bit more of the breadiness than it is the oakiness, but it's definitely, it kind of, it kind of pulses and waves and it definitely sweeps through there a little bit. Another bottle that I have most immediately close by, it is a private barrel selection uh, of barrel bourbon. This is the Kegan Bottle Bourbon Pursuit Bottle. Now this also has uh, some five year stuff in there, some seven year stuff, but then it adds some 10 and 17 year as well. And I feel like it is a very similar flavor pocket, but you notice a little bit more refinement, a little bit more smoothness to the sweetness, a little bit more age in this pick than you do batch 33. If you're one who does like big spicy bourbons, but you also want some sweetness, if you want what I would maybe call an introductory complex pour, I think you're gonna find it here. It makes me wish that I immediately had the Stellum products nearby, because I think this would be really interesting to try against uh, the Stellum bourbon to kind of just see where they rank because they're kind of so close uh, in price point, but the batch 33, a little bit higher than that. But I would say if you're wanting not quite a gateway bourbon, but if you're looking for a bourbon that has some subtle complexities, but they're easy to digest, it's easy to say, oh yeah, I get a lot of different flavors from stone fruit to uh, some interesting sugars to some earthy characteristics. Now on the nose, it kind of almost has some kind of smoked wood going on to it. And specifically coming after the Keg and Bottle Bourbon Pursuit Bottle, I feel like I do notice a little bit more wood, a little bit more oak presence in batch 33. You really have a bottle that plays off of spicy and sweet. It plays off of some youthful notes, some some bright, vibrant notes, as well as some deeper, darker, earthier notes. It has a really interesting marriage of the two of those sides. Now, while it has a really interesting marriage, I say it's an introductory complex pour because I feel like it can set up and go in a bunch of different directions through an evening, but I don't think it excels in either one of the spheres fully in and of itself. It's not an old, mature pour with earthier notes, heavier sugar notes, and it's not necessarily the, the youthful, fully vibrant notes. If you were to maybe say some of the craft whiskey is a little too bright, the, the craft whiskey is a little too doughy, a little too um, playful, a little too youthful, a little too grainy, then I think that the batch 33 is definitely going to, to kind of bring some grounding notes to that. And again, one that continues to change over time. I, I feel like I would have to sit here for a 20 minute video to really continue to show the shape that this continues to take. Because even now I'm pulling out uh, more interesting nuance on the nose, some more smokier notes, floral notes, a little more bouquet like flavors to it. And it draws that way on the palate too. Now, a couple minutes into the video, we have a lot of that toffee, a lot of honey, molasses notes with a nice floral lingering, not quite to the level of, of Four Roses, but it really sits in kind of a similar camp to that in regards to the spice, the sweetness, floral, and a little bit of those kind of medicinal tones to it as well. Really interesting uh, whiskey. I'm really glad I had a chance to try that. Yeah, if this says something that's available to you, if you kind of like that idea of something that's got a lot of spice and a lot of sweetness as well, then I'd say maybe give yourself a try of the Batch 33. Thanks so much as always for tuning in, everybody. Let me know if you've tried Batch 33 or other barrel batches and what you guys have thought about them. Let me know what else you wanna hear me talk about on future videos here on the channel. I'd love to know and I'd love to be able to interact with you guys and dig into some topics that you all wanna hear me talk about. Till next time, everybody, we'll see you all later.